Here, we slow down. Here, we sit and we chat about homesteading, homemaking, and slow living. We have the conversations that might be a little bit difficult. We talk about life, we talk about our character, we talk about the people we hope and we strive to be. We tell stories and we listen with eager ears. Here, we turn back the clock just a little bit, like sitting in front of the fire with your dearest loved ones, taking the time to sip our coffee slow and tuck into a conversation without the rush and the propensity to move on to the next thing, fast and ferocious without any regard for what we might be missing in the meantime. Let's learn to talk to one another again and find the beauty in the magic in conversation and storytelling. Let's chat. Slancha. Hello, hello, and welcome to the first episode of the Chats with Cass podcast. I'm so excited to be here with you all. I am so eager to start this new little adventure that we have going. I am just looking so forward to it all. So let's just hop right in. This first episode, we are going to be just kind of welcoming you, talking a little bit about what this podcast is going to be like, and telling you a little bit about us in case you don't know. So I grew up in a little community in northeastern Pennsylvania where there were no other children besides my sister and I except for the neighbors grandkids that would come in for just a couple of weeks in the summer and I have the best memories of growing up there and there was a woman that lived down the street and my sister and I would walk down and we would sit in her kitchen for hours and hours and listen to her tell stories of when she was a young girl. We would go and chat with her and we would talk to her about all of the different things that she experienced through life. And as a child, I didn't realize it. But what I realize now as an adult is that this woman showed me the art of conversation and the art of giving someone else your time and consideration and making you feel like there's no one else in the world that you know that that you'd be you'd rather be talking to she she had this way about her that made you feel like you were the most important person to her in that moment in the time when you were there And that's something that as an adult, I've really tried to emulate in my life. And I realized that a lot of the way that people are able to, you know, make other people feel that way is by having good conversations and telling good stories. We live in an age of cell phones, and I didn't get one until I was in high school, and I know that there's going to be a lot of people listening to this that have the opposite where they were introduced to it at a very young age, or the other opposite where they didn't even have a cell phone until they were an adult. And when I was younger, I did not love that I didn't have a cell phone when a lot of my other friends did, but now that I'm an adult, I'm so grateful for it because, like I said, with the conversation with my neighbor down the road, I learned how to talk to people and I learned how to be an active listener when other people talked to me. And that is an invaluable trait. Now, I can talk a lot. That's kind of part of the reason that I wanted to do a podcast because I was doing these YouTube videos that I also called Chats with Cass and I found that these were really long form videos. I could talk for 35, 45 minutes just about one particular subject, especially if it's something that I'm really interested in. And while that's valuable in some ways, not everybody has the mental energy to sit and watch a video for that long and so my husband and I talked about it for a little while and we decided to say you know what why don't we do a podcast because as most podcasters are I am a podcast listener and I like to put in my little earbuds while I'm cleaning my house or putzing around the kitchen or pottering in the garden and I like to listen to people talk I like to listen to the way that people think I like to hear how people live and the way that they interact with the world and how they see things and how they come to the conclusion of their decisions. And I thought to myself, wow, 
this is such a beautiful way to live your life when you're able to, you know, connect with people. And we live in a time where we're able to connect with people that live thousands of miles away from us, maybe in different countries and different cities and different towns. And that is such a unique and cool opportunity that we've never been able to see in the same way that we do now. Now, I'm not saying that I'm anybody special or that I deserve to be listened to or anything like that, but I do love to have good old conversations and talk to people. I love learning about other people and I love hearing how people live and since I like to talk, I said, you know what, I'm going to make a podcast and we'll talk about things. If you heard in our little intro, we will talk about some difficult conversations. We actually have a Patreon. It's $5 a month and there is going to be on that Patreon, you'll get a newsletter, you get our monthly meal plans, and you'll also get an extra podcast episode every single month that kind of we go into a more controversial or maybe not even controversial, but difficult subject. Um, this isn't going to start for a little while. Once we get a bit of a following, we will hopefully be able to do that and do more listener requested videos through Patreon. Like I said, there's just some things I think that are a little bit easier to do behind something like a paywall because you know people are there for the right reasons and not just there to, um, you know, judge your decision making or anything like that. So that's something we're hoping to do in the next couple of months. If you want to check out our Patreon, there's also discount codes, like I said, the monthly newsletter and our monthly meal plan that we put up there as well. This conversation and this podcast, I really want it to be, you know, focusing on this idea of slowing down. We're going to talk about homesteading and homemaking and the idea of slow living just in general. There's a lot that goes into all of this and that's why I said, you know, doing the podcast, breaking it down by episode, I think it'd be really valuable and I'm hopeful that, you know, people respond to it well because I'd love to have guests on and chat with other people about, um, you know, the way that they live and all of those fun things that you get to do when you host your own podcast. We live in town. My husband, Brendan, and I live in town. We have a dog named Nikita. We have two cats. Their names are Murtaugh and Fergus, and we have eight laying hens in the backyard. We're hopeful to get just a couple of more in the next couple months at laying age. We did the chicks last year, and it was great, but we live on less than one-third of an acre, and we just do not have the infrastructure or the space to be able to raise chicks from um, such a young age, unless one of our hens is broody, in which case I would consider buying like the fertilized eggs. Th- this is going down a whole rabbit hole, but... My point is that we started urban homesteading because just like everybody else, back in 2020, our lives got completely flipped upside down. We bought our house on February 14th of 2020 at the perfect time, exactly a month before our state shut down for a couple of months, as many of yours has, if well, all of yours has, because it was basically the whole United States. And my dad had a garden when I was growing up, and... I said, you know what, Brendan, my husband, you know what, Brendan, why don't we go and pick up some wood and we'll make two little garden beds in the background. It'll, in the background, in the backyard, and it'll, you know, it'll award me a little bit of a reward because I hated the job I was working at. I started there February 28th. Obviously, two weeks later, we went on lockdown. I never met anyone at work. My boss was really tricky. It was a toxic work situation. I mean, I would tell you like it was an insurance company and I would go on there and I'd be, you know, working really hard, trying my very best. And the boss would be like, your production yesterday was 14.74 and today it is 14.735. Five. What happened? It was like wild. It was not my cup of tea. And so I ended up quitting that job and oops, I ended up quitting that job and moving into like a more home based life. I started a photography business and then we started YouTube not too long after that. Took a break from it for a while and now we're back. But the garden during that time, the six months that I worked there from home at that insurance company, it was like my refuge. It was the place I went to to 
throw all of the woes of the day away and I was just able to exist in a way that I wasn't able to during the day at work in the garden and I realized how much it meant to me to have a space like that and that's kind of how we ended up with the O'Donnell homestead because also during 2020 I learned how to cook a lot more from scratch I learned how to love my home and decorate my home in a way that was, you know, pleasing to us that made us not want to leave. And my husband got into home brewing and we're like, you know what? Like, this is a little weird. Like, we're doing some weird things here. Nobody else is doing this stuff. We felt a little um, like we were swimming upstream. I was introduced to, you know, the idea of nourishing traditions in the Weston A. Price Foundation, and I found out, like, oh my gosh, like, I do not want to live the same way that I've been living, and so our whole world kind of just flipped upside down, and we switched our goals, like, our goals changed, our mindsets changed around a lot of things, and so we ended up saying, you know what, I'm leaving this job, We I started my own photography business And we started YouTube, like I said, and that we never looked back. And now I'm really grateful because, you know, I got to spend a lot of time when I left that job. I started babysitting my little cousins and now I watch my niece and like I'm able to spend such quality time with the people in my family. My grandma as well. I do a lot with her and my aunts and uncles and I'm just grateful for the opportunities that I've been awarded when we when I slowed down. And if you haven't listened to us on YouTube or saw us on YouTube at all, you the reason I'm telling you this is because it's pretty blatant on YouTube. I've done videos about why I quit my job and things like that. And you can go check that out. That one, I it was a hard video to make, but it was totally worth it. <laughs> um, but I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a background of like, why are we even into this? Like, we live in town, we bought this house here, and we, you know... Like, we wanted to travel. That's what we wanted to do. But again, that didn't happen. And then it's just funny how life changes and how you move through maturity and, you know, develop a different way of living in such a short period of time. And as I've grown over, over, (laughs) as I've grown older, I've found that the people that I feel most connected to and the way that I want to live my life is really rooted in this idea of being able to talk to them. And community is so, so important to me. And the older I'm getting, the more I feel this way. Um, We are taught, in my opinion, to believe that we can go at everything alone. It's almost as if from a really young age, we are kind of encouraged to choose to do things solely for ourselves. But when you live, you know, in a way that is aiming to develop and create and cultivate a good community of people around you, you will find so much joy. Um, there will be so much life to be had in that type of circle and it doesn't matter if your community is not exactly what you expected it to look like when you were young but I've grown to realize that community in general is just really important and the thing about social media that gets really tricky and the thing about you know the online-ness of our lives that is really difficult is that we've lost a tangibility and we've lost a sense of humanness to a, to a certain degree. And that kind of sounds silly. And, you know, I am pretty certain that there are going to be a lot of people who disagree with me, but there is nothing like having a group of people in your life, in your physical life, that are just in your corner. And a lot of the homesteading space seems to be obsessed with this idea of self-sustainability. And that's something that I want to push back on and push back on really hard. And there's some reasons for that. You know, Like I said, community is super important, but the reality is is that we cannot survive alone. I think that 
the one thing that the COVID quarantines did do is it proved to people that we aren't meant to do things alone. We're not meant to survive alone. We need other people. And as much as we don't want to believe that, it's completely true. The nice thing about community is that you're able to choose your community. Um, You're able to put people in your corner that you really believe, believe in you and that you believe in. And when you do that, your life is just so much better for it. Um, And that's something that I hope to, you know, go into as as this podcast goes forward because it is one of the biggest lessons that I have learned is that sometimes it's the people who are right in front of you that you actually I'm going to reword that and say I think it's all the time that the people who are right in front of you deserve more time of day than you give them social media has created a sense of false community Now, that seems silly that I'm saying that as I'm creating a podcast, which is social media, you know. But in this podcast, I really hope to encourage people, like, if you meet people through podcasting, if you meet people online, reach out to them, talk to them. Don't just comment on one another's videos. Get to know them as a person. Try to meet up with them. You know, you don't have to be right near somebody, to, to have them in your community, but you do need to put them first or at least in your first line of sight. You should be making an effort to call them and get to know them and sitting down and share a meal with them if it's at all possible for you to do so at some point, even if it's only once every three years. Call, like We don't do this anymore. We don't put people first and it's really sad. And that's something that with this podcast, I'm really hopeful to highlight is relationships, putting people first, and, you know, just slowing down a little bit and taking the time, having the eyes to see the beautiful things in life. Conversing with other people. We're going to, like, I love the art of conversation, you guys. This is an art. It's something that's so beautiful. It's something that we can grow in. And as I do this podcast, I'm hopeful to have people on here that we can actually converse with. I think that would be so awesome. We're going to talk about homemaking and we're going to talk about homesteading and all those beautiful things as well. But a lot of it's just going to be wrapped up in this beauty of words and conversation and communication that I think is so lost in translation today. This is not the type of podcast that you're going to listen to and scroll by in 30 seconds. It's not TikTok. We're really going to go deep into some things together. And I am so looking forward to it. I am so looking forward to the relationships and the community that I hope to develop here with Chats with Cass and the O'Donnell Homestead. And thank you guys so much for being here. Now, I'm going to read you... A little poem that I wrote a couple of months ago I wrote this little poem a couple of months ago and I feel like it perfectly encapsulates the way that I feel about life right now and so I hope that it resonates with you and I hope that you guys kind of liked this little introductory podcast um not all of them will be this rambly this was kind of just like this is who we are this is what we're excited for and we hope that you would love to join us in on this this conversation we want to encourage that so here's my little poem i dreamed of a life of adventure of climbing to the top of skyscrapers and seeing the whole city blanketed in light i dreamed of foreign places and swimming in every sea but a few years ago the whole world seemingly stopped ships were docked and planes stopped flying over mighty seas but what happened to me It was a greater gift than adventure could ever give. You see, when the world stopped, I saw that life went on. The robins still came back in the spring, and the vegetables grew in the summer rain like every year before I just hadn't noticed them. I realized the life I was missing by running. What I know now is that the greatest work of art is maybe not the whole world, but our little part. I hope to see you guys here again soon. 
be back in a couple of weeks with our second episode. That's going to be on diets and health and nutrition. And yeah, I hope that y'all have a beautiful day. Slancha. Until next time.